Act 3 is well underway and we have our first significant patch of the act and the introduction of one of the most hyped agents on our roster, Chamber. What is going on Pro Guides family, it is your host Sergeant Frost and today we're bringing you guys the patch 3.10 tier list. With Chamber's release, we've got a new agent to place and also some meta changeups, especially on the new map Fracture. So without further ado, let's hop right into the action. At the very top of our S tier this patch, we have the Information King himself, Sova. Sova is an agent that uniquely provides a lot of info, and that doesn't change no matter the rank you're playing in. His kit is great for basically all situations, and that makes it hard to find someone who can challenge Sova's informational value. Sova has a low skill floor because he's simple to pick up, but he has a super high skill ceiling because all of his abilities have a skill gap in terms of understanding how much you can use them to their max potential. Learning Sova at a deeper level is very rewarding though, as his ability to influence the round only gets stronger with the more lineup knowledge you have. Since information is key and Sova is irreplaceable on most teams, it's always a good idea to pick up Sova as an agent if you're looking for a reliable initiator. Next up we have a familiar face, Viper. Nothing much has changed about Viper. She's still the same Sentinel controller hybrid we all know and love. With that being said, Viper's position in the meta doesn't seem to be challenged by anything, and her kit is very rewarding for those who can play around smokes and setups kind of like how a Cypher does. She's viable on pretty much any map, and exceptional on a lot of the other maps as well, which is a big plus for Viper mains. She does take a bit more experience in order to make her work since her controller kit is not like traditional smokes, so each map will require its own set of lineups. But nonetheless, her damage output and zone control make her an agent to be feared by everyone. As always, Jet is a shoe in for the S tier, and it's not hard to see why. Jet is just ridiculously mobile with no clear counters, and that makes it exceptionally hard to deal with her in most site take situations. Her dash alone makes her pretty much an OP agent because it creates so much versatility around her playstyle that not only can she smoke dash onto site, she can also take aggressive defender angles, play off angles, and also have a quick escape for bad situations. Add an operator into the mix and you've got an agent that just feels way too risk free. With that being said, if you want a high octane duelist that can create twitter clips just as easily as she can create space, then Jet is unmatched. Coming in hot for the first time on a pro guides tier list, the French sharpshooter Chamber is making his debut. We have to think for a second about whether to place him in the A tier or S tier, as his kit seems strong on paper but could play very badly in game. But don't worry, he plays exceptionally well in game and is borderline broken, so we're placing him in the S tier for the time being. Even though he's officially a sentinel, Chamber doesn't feel quite like a sentinel. He seems to fulfill more of a role like Jet would on a team in terms of defensive play. He has basically two alarm bots, and nothing else defensively except for a repositioning tool. At the same time, Chamber's teleport is exceptionally fast, which means you can kind of play like a Jet by taking deep aggressive angles and then teleporting out as soon as you take contact, which opens up a lot of room for defender side plays. And his headhunter is not a bad ability by any means. Not only is it an upgraded version of a Sheriff with no falloff damage, it's even more versatile in terms of economy management. His ultimate is also ridiculously strong, as it gives you an upgraded operator for a round. This makes dealing with him very, very scary, and it offers chamber players a huge momentum swing in eco rounds by spawning out of thin air a 5000 credit gun for a sight hold or an aggressive pick. If you're trying to pick up chamber and be a pioneer for this new powerhouse, we're going to be making a guide on chamber very soon to give you a better idea of his playstyle. But if you really want to get some in-depth knowledge from the top of the rank ladder, head over to our website ProGuides.com where our Radiant and Immortal level coaches are more than willing to share their secrets to stay ahead of the meta and dominate the rank ladder. And that includes abusing Chamber while he's still a new agent. So if you have the mindset of wanting to improve faster than your competitors, click the link in the description to get started today. Right now Sky is chilling at the top of A tier as an amazing agent, but she's just shy of S tier potential or dominance. The Sky craze seems to be dying down a bit ever since her nerfs, but she's still extremely good. It's just that a lot of players aren't insta-locking her in ranked, mostly because they don't view her as busted or beyond broken anymore. Yet at the same time, her flashes are still probably the most broken in the game, and that means she always has a place on teams as a solid threat. She can pop flash around corners and secure multi-kills. She can scout out an entire area by herself with her dog, and she's even replaced Sage as the main healer in the meta because her heals are just better overall. Sky is a jack of all trades agent that also happens to be a master of flashes. Also, did you guys know Sabrosa recently put out a guide on playing Sky? It's a pretty helpful watch for anyone who's trying to get a better idea of how to play Sky like a pro. Next up, Reyna sits close to the top of A tier as a great momentum based duelist. Reyna is an agent that scales with the skill level of the player playing her. That means depending on who's playing Reyna on the other team, you will either get free kills because the other Reyna is inept, or you might consider uninstalling because she's unstoppable. But one of the big reasons for why she can function well in the meta is mainly because as the community is leveling up, people understand how to support duelists more. So the utility metagame is evolving to the point where entries don't require as much utility for themselves to enter a site. Reynas can now rely on their teammates supporting her which makes her much more lethal in game. 
that has slowly but surely brought Reyna up the ranks from being just a simple ranked demon to a pick that even pro teams use on a map like Icebox. For the longest time, Astra was considered a niche pick considering how her nerfs at the start of Episode 3 made everyone think that she was done for as an agent. It's been several months now, and Astra has proven that she is still THE main smoker for team comp in the meta. As people have become more accustomed to her changes, she has shown that her kit is simply too useful. It's not even that the other agents become worse or got nerfed. It's just that Astra's kit is just built different. I guess it doesn't help that Omen and Brimstone haven't had much changes ever since Astra came along, and Viper doesn't quite fulfill the same role in the controller's crew as traditional smokes. There's just no competition for Astra at the moment, and with a skill ceiling as astronomically high as this agent, we only see the skill gap widen with each passing day as teams and players innovate with her kit. Ever since Breach got a buff that allowed him to bully Killjoy's utility a lot more, Killjoy has been at risk of being taken out of commission on certain maps. And while that didn't happen for most maps, it seems like Breach has won the war on Fracture, which means that Killjoy is actually not a dominant sentinel on that map anymore. While this isn't a trend for other maps, Killjoy mains need to beware the day Breach finds his way into the meta again. With that being said, Killjoy is still more useful as a defensive-minded agent, and she still has the best ultimate in the game that gives you the same amount of value on defense as on attack. She's by far the best overall sentinel at the moment, but we'll have to see if Breach might make a comeback along to knock her down a peg over time. Closing out the A tier, we have a deadlier version of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's Vision whose name is KO. KO as an agent is still on the rise, but it's clear that he is more impactful than he used to be. A lot of people in the community are high on him because he counters sentinels in their setups so well. And now that Chamber is officially out in the game, KO now has a new agent that his suppression abilities can counter. Suppression is starting to prove effective as a consistent counter to defensive setups, and his flashes are now just as strong as Sky's flashes for popping around corners. All this makes KO feel a lot smoother to play, and overall a much stronger pick as a duelist initiator hybrid. Starting off the B tier, we have the Forgotten Sentinel Sage. Well, she isn't really forgotten, it just seems like the community has evolved to where people don't pick her as much as they used to. She isn't struggling specifically, but she's kind of overshadowed right now by more specialized picks. Newer agents with more specialized kits are giving her trouble with standing out in the meta, and her argument for viability at this point is just her wall and resurrection. Apart from that, her whole kit feels decent but not too useful, and she does like information tools when all the other sentinels have some form of information gathering. But that's not to say she's not viable or anything. Her wall still has amazing uses, but it typically requires more team coordination to get good value since the lifespan is a grand total of 5 seconds now especially since everyone knows how to spam the wall so quickly. Raze is an agent that is a niche duelist in the duelist class that works well for some maps but feels weak on others. She doesn't have the self-sustainability in her kit that the other duelists have, but she supplements that with a whole lot of damage that functions exceptionally well on choky maps like Split and Bind. In my opinion, she actually functions more like a sentinel on defense than a duelist on these maps, as her utility is great for stalling and commanding respect. On attack, Raze is great at creating chaos and breaking up the enemy team with her movement and AoE damage abilities. So if you're the type of player that likes fast-paced action and crazy entry pathing, then Raze is a great pick. Cypher hasn't been the main sentinel in the meta for quite a while now, but that doesn't count him out entirely, as his kit is still very useful for flank watching and anchoring sites. It's just that people are getting good at neutralizing his setup, which means Cyphers need to constantly innovate to keep up with the meta. But if you didn't know, Cypher is higher up on this tier list than he was last time for one reason specifically, and it has to do with the war between Breach and Killjoy. Because Breach is a counter to Killjoy's ultimate, Killjoy is now much less useful on Fracture, which in turn means that Cypher has stepped up to pick up the pieces. This is only supported by the fact that Cypher has the best flank watching kit in the game, which means that he is uniquely powerful on Fracture now with the added twist that Killjoy is countered by Breach. So if you're a Cypher main, take this as a glimmer of hope that maybe Cypher isn't that bad after all. Speaking of Breach, Breach is not the best initiator in the meta per se, but he does have the niche role of countering Killjoy as we just mentioned, and he's won the battle on Fracture versus Killjoy. Now that players have tested him out more because of Fracture, people are starting to see Breach's strengths on tighter maps. Breach overall is very good at executing on sites and directing aggressive plays, and it might become a possibility that Breach can find his way into other maps and start shaking things up literally. Oh boy, not again. It's time to talk about one of the most tragic Fall From Grace agents in the game right now and his name is Omen. Omen hasn't gotten any buffs or those leak potential changes that were supposed to be coming his way. His kit is overshadowed by Viper and Astra, and the only time you'd want his blind over CC from Astra and Viper is if your team has no sentinels and you need to delay a single rush for a couple seconds. Omen is currently in a spot similar to Brimstone where he's just not that great for a lot of situations, so people would much rather use an Astra in general. Hopefully, Omen gets some love in the future and either gets his shadow step changed to be more useful, or maybe some buffs to give him some power to compete with the top dogs. Closing out the B tier, we have the flaming British SAS member Phoenix. The other duelists in the game have found little advantages in their kit to edge out Phoenix, and it's hard to justify a duelist who can do everything but nothing amazingly. 
Phoenix is an agent that does feel fun to play, but in game when you pick him, you can't help but feel like picking another duelist would have allowed you to do a lot more in certain situations. He's balanced as all things should be, but unfortunately, Valorant's agents are not balanced in the center, but more on the edges with specialized agents. So it's hard for a middleman to fit in. Now let's move on to the C tier. Ah, Brimstone. Brim is an agent that is fine to use if you need a smoker that has a low skill floor so you won't mess him up. But he doesn't excel at much of anything outside of maybe post plants where he can delay quite a bit of time because of his molly and ultimate. Brim's kit just feels lackluster, and having only 3 smokes makes it hard for him to feel good throughout a round like Astro or Omen can. Also, his stim is a nice ability in theory, but it's definitely not as useful as other CC abilities or other support abilities as a whole. Hopefully Brimstone does get some love, because I'm starting to think Astro is the only smoker in the game. And finally, do I even need to explain? It feels like it's been ages now and we still haven't gotten any news on Yoru being reworked. And with Chamber coming along and basically introducing a better functioning teleport, Yoru is down horrendously. Honestly, Chamber feels like the nail in the coffin at this point. If you want to play Yoru, you might as well play Chamber, or play Sky if you want good flashes. Either way, let's hope Riot pulls through with a spicy Yoru rework before he fades away from the agent roster. And with that being said, that concludes our patch 3.10 tier list. If you enjoyed this tier list, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest Valorant news, updates, and guides. Also, make sure to check out our website for truly amazing on-demand coaching. This has been your host, Sergeant Frost, and I'll see you all again in the next one.